Hello, in the previous video you saw my little game that tests your ability to remember a sequence of flashes of red and green on a multicolor LED and then replay that using red and blue buttons. And uh, now I'd like to take you through the code. This is uh, VNC where I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi. There it is, and um, I can run it with this Thani integrated development environment or editor, and uh, the program runs. And um, let me now walk you through the code. We'll see how it works. There are several Python files and a JavaScript file and an HTML file. And this is the main Python file right here. And um, let me just show you the web app here. So you've seen this. This is the web app. This runs in the browser on the Raspberry Pi, and it runs the HTML code and the JavaScript code. And the JavaScript code communicates with the Python code using an XML HTTP request, which is done through uh, jQuery. Okay, the main uh, part of the program here is this, and it's not too long. It uses Flask as the web application framework, and then it uses another module, part of the application called Game Loop, and then another one called Player, and it uses a Q for safe, multi-threaded communication between uh, different parts of the program. And so here on line 13, we create the Q, and then we create this tuple of the three players. And these are the names of the players. And um, these are the GPIO pins, the pins on the Raspberry Pi, where the red and blue buttons are connected. And then these are the pins where the multicolor LEDs are connected. This creates the game loop. And then this sets up Flask so that the so that this module here can respond to and deliver the um, the web page and also uh, deliver the um, status requests from the JavaScript code. The, the JavaScript code running in here pulls and says, give me the status changes. And when they arrive, then they're displayed here. Okay, so let's come back to names and scores. These app route decorators tell Flask what function to associate with which URL paths. So when you first launch the thing, it returns, it renders index.html, which we'll look at a little later. And then there's also a reset button here, this one. And that calls reset on all the players. And then there's the status one, and that's the one that it blocks for a while until there's an event in the queue that it can return as part of a JavaScript object. Um, and there's a timeout of five. There was an interesting problem without having the timeout, then if the user reloaded the browser, then there were some old threads remaining and then they would consume the events. So this way, um, that solves that problem. That was a tough problem to work out. And then when the page first loads, it calls status no wait so that it doesn't wait for any event because there are no events at the beginning. It just returns the results of calling names and scores here. Um, let's go up, back up and look at names and scores. Um, the game object is here. It's this game loop. And then inside there is players. And we get a list of all the players and then we sort it um, by the number of wins that each player has in reverse order, so the largest numbers at the top. 
And then we extract some things from it, like the name, the number of wins. And then um, if there have been some wins, then there'll be fastest and mean and slowest times here. Otherwise, we'll just return blanks for those, just empty strings. Um, okay, so I think that's it for the main module. Let's look now at the player module. Here is in the player module, there's a class player. You can see this says it's information about the player, including the buttons, the LED, and game performance. And let's look through in it here. We remember the name, and then we create the buttons. And the buttons, you might remember, is a tuple of those GPIO pins. And so this creates one button for each of those, and there are two. So this becomes a list of button objects. Um, and let's go in here and look at create button now. That's down farther in this same file. Um, what is button? Let's see if this documentation will come up quickly here. This is part of GPIO0. That's too small to read probably, but um, button comes from GPI, GPIO0, and so does RGB LED. That's the GPIO0 is a convenient layer that we're using to interface with the buttons for input and the LEDs, the multicolor LEDs for output. Okay, back to here. Um, so we create a button at the specified pin number, and then we hook into the uh, when pressed here. So we say when the button is pressed, we want to run this expression here. And what this does is call this pressed method. And the pressed method makes a note of the current time and creates a new button press object, which is just a simple, let's take a look. Uh, it's a simple class that stores which button and at what time it was pressed. So this adds that to self presses. Okay, and then it, um, if debug logging is turned on, it logs a message. This is useful for um, seeing what's going on. It'll say which player pushed which button at which time. Okay, how did we get there? We got there from create button, so back to here. This creates the RGB LED, and then this is the number of wins. That's initialized to zero. Here's the presses, so each player has a record of the button presses. And the elapsed times, um, so these are used, this is used to calculate the um, fastest, the mean, and the slowest. And since there's multiple, there's multi-threading going on, we're using a lock, which is a feature of Python that will allow you to make sure that you don't execute certain critical sections of code simultaneously from multiple threads. Um, what else do we want to look at here? Maybe we'll um, come back to these as we see them used elsewhere. Okay, so going back now to the main module, we've looked at the player. Um, what should we look at next? Let's look at the game loop. And that is in this game loop module here. And this is the, the main non-web app part of the game, and it runs in a second thread. Um, when the object is constructed, we create a new thread and tell it to use this method here. So this is what runs in a separate thread. And let's look at what this does. Uh, we'll come back to these. Um, so first it sleeps it sleeps a little while. And I should mention that this game plays in two modes. One is a simple uh, reaction timer. So it flashes a light and you push it 
uh, a button immediately. There's no sequence of lights. And in that game mode, uh, it waits a random amount of time. Then the program makes a note of what time it is now. And then it creates a random color sequence if we're in the sequence mode. Otherwise, it just uses um, the blue color. Uh, let's look at how random color sequence works. Here it is. So this is a list comprehension. And what does it do? Well, for n in some range, and what's the range? Well, the range comes from this constant sequence range. Let's go and look at that. That's in the settings module. And the program will have uh, between 2 and 6, uh, a sequence of length between 2 and 6. And that's randomly, we randomly choose from within this range. And that's how many random colors we produce. And random color works like this. It goes from 0 to um, button colors is red and blue. So it goes from 0 to the length of this minus 1. So we have, there, there are two different colors. We have red and blue. And so this either produces a 0 or a 1, which corresponds to red or blue. So back to the random color sequence, we end up with this list of zeros and ones that correspond to red and blue. Now we're back to here. And once we've generated the random sequence, then we can flash the LEDs for all the players using that sequence. And let's go and look at flash LEDs now. That's in a module called LEDs. And this flashes once for each color index. So if you have, for instance, uh, red, red, blue, blue, then this will flash red, red, blue, blue for all the players. So it starts with, in, in that example, it starts with red and then turns on red for each player and then waits for two tenths of a second and then it turns the LED off and waits for another two tenths of a second and then it goes on to the next color in the sequence. Okay, going back now. Then once we flash the LEDs, we want to, um, if we're doing the sequence game, then we want to clear all the clicks. Um, so that the input from the player starts once the flashing sequence is finished. And if we're playing the, the other game, um, then it clears old clicks. And this is a kind of cheating preventative, preventative measure. Uh, preventative or preventive? Hang on a second. Preventive. It's a cheating preventive measure. Uh, somebody could just be on the button and go tick, 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 super fast. And then the light flashes. And then because they're doing this thing, they would get, um, they might be first. Um, this only clears out clicks um, older than some uh, constant. I think it's a half a second. So that discourages that kind of cheating. Uh, now that we've cleared those clicks, either all or the old ones, then we call this method elsewhere to handle the player responses. And let's take a look at that. Here we are now in the responses module. We're going to handle the player responses. And this method stays running until either all the players have responded uh, correctly um, or the, the, we've timed out. So this is calculating when to time out and then this is to make a note of who has finished. And we'll come back to these two functions. Uh, so we say why, while round active, well, what does that mean? That means we're still 
uh, we're still going. So we haven't timed out, and uh, and we have not uh, not all the players have finished yet. And then we say for player in unfinished players. Well, unfinished players is this. So it looks at um, it looks at all the players and finds those that are not in our list of finished players. And this is a um, it is a uh, generator expression. So it's an efficient way of um, providing a um, sequence of things here. Okay, so for every one of these unfinished players, then we're going to do this. And we say, if good button input. Now, what does that mean? That means that the, uh, we, first we have to see which buttons they've pressed. And remember in the player object, there's a presses uh, sequence that's got all the presses, the time, the button, which button and um, what time it was. And so this pulls out the button indexes for each of those. So this would give you something like uh, 0110 for red, blue, blue, red. Uh, so um, this gets those, and then we compare that to see if that matches the correct sequence, and also that the first press was not too early. Um, so if good button input, then we calculate the elapsed time, how long it took the player to do that, and then we record the completion. Let's just jump to there, and then we'll come back. So now we're, now we're in the player module again. So record completion, and this with self lock. Make sure that we um, don't modify the elapsed times list uh, while it's being read. So we append the elapsed time for that player. And then if the length of finished players is zero, then the first time, the first player to, um, if this is true, then this is the, the winner. This is the first player. And then we, into the queue, we put this message. The name of the player wins in however many milliseconds. Then we increment the wins count for the player. And then we signal the winner. Now let's look at signal winner. This is in the LEDs module. So signal the winner blinks the LED. Um, three times. On, off, three times. Okay, going back. Um, okay, so if this is not the first player to finish the sequence, then we ask if we're playing the sequence game, and if we are, then we also signal the non-winners. In the other game, we don't signal the non-winners. We only signal the winner. But here, signal non-winner does this. Um, it blinks, but only once. So if you get three blinks, you were the first one. If you get one blink, you completed it, but um, you weren't the first. And you might remember that from the video where I demonstrated the program running. Then we add this player to finished players. We sleep for a tenth of a second. Um, I don't know how often this needs to check. Um, uh, to see if there uh, if there's new activity, but this works pretty well. Um, okay, and then this returns finished players, so now we're going to go back to where this was called from. And that was here, so we're back in the game loop. Now I think we're done with the game loop, and so let's go back to um, the main module and see what's left to discuss. I think it's time now maybe to look at, well, let's look at settings and then we'll look at the HTML and JavaScript. So this is where configurable settings uh, are made. So these, I've built these devices with red and blue buttons, but you could add another color or more. Um, these are the two game modes. And this is saying that this is the game mode that we're playing right now. Here are the button colors. We've seen this and the sequence range. 
And then this is uh, discarding button presses older than a certain number of seconds. And min weight, max weight, weight range, max reaction time per sequence element. This is how long it waits uh, for you to, to remember and re-enter that sequence. Okay, here's the index.html file. And what's interesting about it, HTML, head, um, nothing special in here. We use Bootstrap to help with the styling. In the body, we have a container. That's for Bootstrap. And then here we have a div called event. So if we go and look here and we look inspect this, we should see that this is the event div. Then we have a table. And then we have the reset button. And then we um, bring in jQuery and then reaction.js. And reaction.js is next. Uh, so here it is. And uh, so this is JavaScript, of course, and we have a class called Reaction Time Game. Um, I really need to rename this now because a, the, this used to be only Reaction Time, and then I added the um, sequence remembering thing later. Um, okay, so what this does is set up the reset button. So when you push reset, this calls the Python program and uses um, reset. So let's jump back to here. And this is reset, which I showed you before. It resets all the players, their, um, their button presses, their, their scores. And then we call update status with true here. So here's update status and true. This argument true fills this no weight parameter. And you'll see what no weight does here. Um, it either calls status or status no weight. Let's go back to here. So here is status and here's status no weight. And the first time through it calls status no weight because we don't want it to delay. Uh, so this is get JSON. It's an XML HTTP request. It happens uh, asynchronously, and when it completes, then this block runs from here down to here. And what's in here? Well, it's there's a log message that shows what status data it got. And if there's an event, then look what it does using jQuery. It finds the event element on the page. Let's take a look at that. Here's the event element. And it sets the text of that to what's in the data event. And if there's nothing in the data event, then it just sets the text to an empty string. And if there's scores, then look what we do. We, we empty out the body of the table. Here's the table again. So the body starts out empty, but if we put something in it, then we need to empty that out. So that's what this does. And then we find the body of the table, scores T body, and then we iterate over the scores and we append each one into the body. So there are one, two, three, four, five parts, and they go into one, two, three, four, five, these five columns of the table. And then once that's done, then we call set timeout so that 100 milliseconds later, update status gets called again. So this is the, this is the loop. So it, it blocks. The first time it doesn't block here because we do the no wait. After that, it will block until there's either an event or you remember that five second timeout will happen to f um, avoid the uh, bug that I talked about. 
Okay, so that's the class, and then this is where the class gets instantiated. Okay, so I think we've looked at everything. Let's um, show you where the source code is. Here, github.com slash dcbriccetti, dc Dave Brichetti, Brichetti, and electronics. And this one is called um, Red Blue. So everything's in here. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you, and uh, have fun making your own projects.